Hey everybody, Eric here. And today I wanna to share with you a few places that I recommend for finding great render ready assets for you to use in your renderings. So when I say render ready, I mean a few things, which is high quality, uh, high poly, but also with the extra information that rendering needs. So things like reflections or materials, bump maps, all that extra stuff that you get when rendering that is sort of above and beyond what you would expect or what you need when you're just modeling in SketchUp. Now, there are some special places or special considerations that we need to kind of take into account when we look for these assets. And um, not everything's you know equal, not everything's gonna work for you. So I wanna kind of pass along some places that I've found success and some things that I've used to be able to find exactly what I need for my renderings. So let's go ahead and do that right now. The first place, and I think the most obvious place to start is here in 3D Warehouse. Now, I wanna point out that even if you see things that look like really good renderings, they may or may not be render ready. This might be something that the company rendered, um, and I can't say for sure because I'm just using this here as an example. This might be a rendering to show the product or even a photograph, um, sort of how it works in real life. So just kind of keep that in mind is that you may see something that looks render ready that may not be. So there's a couple of things we can do. First thing I wanna do is search, let's do some furnishing. So let's pretend like we're gonna do an interior. I normally do landscape, but let's go ahead and switch to either interior design or furniture for this. And let's look for something that I think is gonna work. Now, right here, if I just type in furniture, I mean, I've got thousands and thousands of thousands of things. Even if I typed in something like chair, I still have thousands of, of, of objects to choose from. Now, there's nothing wrong with any of these, for example. These are all manufacturer's chairs. If I switch over to models here, I'm gonna get stuff both from manufacturers and from the community. I might find uh, any of these could work. But when I say render ready, what I mean is that it has materials that the rendering engine will pick up. So something like uh, a chair here may have metal in it, or it may have a fabric material. So these little things here might look good in this rendering, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna render the way it looks. So one thing I like to do is I like to see if I can weed things out in particular by just typing in the word V-Ray. Now I use V-Ray. So even if you don't use V-Ray, a lot of times the same settings that V-Ray uses will also work for Enscape or Thea or something else. So from here, V-Ray is gonna do two things, which is number one, it probably assumes that you're gonna get high poly assets. Not always, but it means that V-Ray can handle it. In this case, a couch that's 46 megabytes, that size is probably due both to polygons, but also the materials that are used in the, uh, in the model itself. So another thing we wanna look for is, is again, looking at like materials that may be applied already. If it's V-Ray chairs, it might be safe to assume I see metal, I see leather, I see wood that's been lacquered. It might be safe to assume that all of these extra material layers and settings are actually saved in this model. So I'm just gonna go ahead and download this here and wait for that to download. I'm gonna pop this open. So it should open here in SketchUp. I've just got a blank file uh, just ready to go. So if you see this rendering here, that's just so that it previews, so that you can see the preview of it rendered. So I actually don't need that. I'm gonna do my own here. I am gonna drop, whenever I do a test render, I'll usually drop an infinite plane in just so I can see how shadows cast and stuff like that. So as you can see, I just downloaded this off the internet. I haven't done anything to it. I'm just gonna press render and see what happens. This is an interactive render. Um, so let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit just to kind of see what that V-Ray render ready setting or render, just to see what that V-Ray uh, search parameter does. If you look here, you can see two things, which is number one is this metal has a reflection. So that setting's already been done for us. Now this wood here has a reflection, so that's great. And even this leather material is a little bit reflective. If I take my shadows, if I kind of change either the time of year or even the time of day, you can see in the interactive render that those actually, um, all of that sort of nice reflections and detail updates. So that's kind of cool. Now I know that didn't save us a ton, a ton of time, but if you liked that chair, it's nice not to have to go in and replace that material. So just by, just by coming in here and saying V-Ray, I can kind of scroll stuff that probably most likely has already been rendered 
and it already has those settings preserved. Another thing while I'm here, if you wanted to kind of play it safe, if you feel comfortable rendering or you know you're going to turn things into proxies, you can always sort of bump up the polygon count or you can bump up the file size depending on what you're looking for. And again, that's going to weed out anything that's really, really low poly. Just keep in mind that if you're not using proxies or something like that, you want to be careful just how you sort of organize this stuff so that you're not just overloading your model. So that's pretty much it. If you don't want to use V-Ray, you can also type in or sometimes render ready is a keyword that works. And you can also find other assets. Here we go. We've got this V-Ray chair shows up again. We've got a lot of other assets that probably retain that V-Ray information. So that's just sort of 3D warehouse. It's a way to kind of narrow it down from, let's say, 10,000 items to, in this case, 48 items, because I'm looking at high poly only and I'm looking at render ready only within the furniture category. So that definitely starts to narrow it down a little bit. So let's pop back over to SketchUp. I'm going to start, I'm going to create a new blank file. Let's look at two other resources. So speaking of V-Ray, now I know if you've taken the V-Ray courses on SketchUp campus, you're already familiar with V-Ray Cosmos. So Cosmos is all on the cloud. So it's basically a library or a database or whatever of all sort of render ready assets that Chaos Group has provided. So whether they've sort of purchased them or licensed them through third parties or whether they've created them themselves, they've got all kinds of great things that you can search. In this case, there's people. If I kind of get back out of here and go back to the home screen, let's see, I want to go home. I can find some furnishings, lighting, cars, all kinds of great stuff. So, and you can see here, it says new, which means that it's updated constantly because it's cloud-based. You're going to get stuff coming um, whenever they push new assets, they can just push the collection up. You update the, the browser and there you go. So let's just grab one of those. This is a chair that since I was looking at chairs earlier, let's do chairs again. And I'm going to go ahead and drop that chair in. And the cool thing about using Chaos Cosmos is that it comes in as a proxy already. So if I turn my hidden geometry on, you can see that actually the polygons are pretty low on this. Do the same thing I did before, drop an infinite plane in and press test render. Let's go ahead and take a look at what that chair looks like. So we've got this nice mesh material. We've got some really nice stainless steel. And we can see sort of, again, that perforated mesh material on the arms and just lots and lots of great detail. All that material uh, that we're looking for that we would expect in a high quality render is showing up nicely. And again, all we had to do is just search for chairs or search for furniture, download the one we want, click import, and we are ready to render. So Chaos Cosmos, um, it's not just for furnishings. You've got materials. There's all kinds of lighting settings. So this is basically your one-stop shop for getting you know, high poly assets into your model. Now, though, this, of course, requires that you have a V-Ray license, which is why I started with 3D Warehouse, because if you're using a different rendering engine, um, then you may want to actually have something that's not tying you to a specific render engine like Cosmos does. So I want to show you one more resource that you may or may not be familiar with. It's actually in the extensions warehouse. So if I go there and it actually shows up, I don't even have to search for it because it shows up right here, at least right now anyway, as a featured extension. It's called 3D Bazaar. So 3D Bazaar is by the same folks that brought us Scatter and by the same folks that brought us um, Transmuter, which are both great extensions for rendering. So the 3D Bazaar is basically a online marketplace that you can, where sellers can bring their objects and host them. And again, this is going to be more for, let me see if I can find first, find 3D Bazaar and open it up. This is going to be more for like if you can't find what you want and you're willing to spend a little bit of money. Because to be honest with you, like anything in life, you get what you pay for. I want to look at some plants. Uh, you can sort of narrow it down with categories. If I'm looking for grasses, shrubs, flowers, how about trees? There's 100 trees over here. You can narrow it down by render engine. So I'm only looking for V-Ray, although I think most of these should work for all of them. But let's just say I want a specific to V-Ray. And for whatever reason, let's say I'm, I am willing to pay, but I'm a bit price conscious, so I'm not willing to pay more than, say, $20 for a tree. And let's see what shows up. I've got all kinds of options, most of them less than $20 for a very, very high quality, very great tree. So if you have Scatter, then you may see already that there are some things that Scatter gives you for free. So if you look over here and you click the free button, 
you get free gravel, grass, flowers, lotus shrubs. There's all kinds of, there's even some sample trees that you can download as well. So I'm gonna look at this white oak just to see what I get when I click on this tree. What exactly am I getting? This is from Viz Park. So this actually comes from a sort of manufacturer or a modeler that makes these really great uh, trees that you can purchase in packages, either as bundles or individually. In this case, I've actually already downloaded it, so I'm just going to click Import. But before I do, now what's great about uh, 3D Bazaar, again, it does all the heavy lifting for you. You can either bring it in with full poly geometry, in which case you're going to get all of the leaves and materials and polygons, or you can already anticipate that, you know what, I might have 50 or 60 of these trees. Let's bring it in as a proxy. And again, that's the file. There's different versions of it. So you're not just getting the tree, but you can get kind of version one, version two, version three, or version four, which is pretty awesome. Let's see what version two looks like. I've already tried version one and I already am familiar with that one. Click import. And then it should just place automatically. It might ask me to place it and that's okay. I'll just place it. And if I zoom out, it'll look like it might not be there, but that's actually because I chose to place a proxy instead of the tree with all full polys and you know whatever that's gonna be, 200 megabytes or 250 megabytes for that tree. But I assume that everything should look great when I render it. So I'm gonna press render and there is my tree. Cool thing about that proxy is that it just did all that hard work for me, comes in as a proxy. If I wanted to stamp a bunch of these, I could come over here and go stamp, stamp, yeah, stamp, stamp, stamp. You can see there's no, you can see there's no delay. There's no performance issues, super fast. And if I zoom way in, just really, really high poly trees. So I'm happy with those. I'm happy with how seamless and easy this process was to find them. Of course, I could go online and I could find VizPark's website. I could download it straight from there or I could buy it from them. Or what's nice about this is that it just automates everything. You can find it, you can purchase it, and you can drop uh, download it, import it, and drop it in, and you're ready to go. It also has the option of saving your local stuff. So like all those render-ready things that I find from 3D Warehouse, um, I can go ahead and actually browse to my own local rendering collection as well. So the 3D Bazaar can actually be kind of like your render, kind of like a component library for rendering. And so you can kind of think about it collecting everything, of course, except for uh, except for the Chaos Cloud stuff, in which case it lives on the cloud. So those kind of stay there. And then when you're ready, you just open, you just import them through the Chaos Cloud browser. So um, lots of just different options here. So I know that was quick, it was a lot of information, but that was three resources. If you are already familiar with one of those, um, if you've been rendering with V-Ray, you're probably already familiar with V-Ray Cloud or Chaos Cloud, great resource. Again, use it if you already know it. A 3D warehouse, always a great resource, but like anything with 3D warehouse, you kind of get what you put in as far as your search terms. So definitely just kind of think about it a little bit, spend some time testing some things and see how those search parameters are gonna get you a better result each and every time. And lastly, don't be afraid to try things like an extension, even things that come at a cost. If it saves you time, ultimately, it's a good thing. So just kind of balance that cost versus what it's going to take for you to go search it, find it, download it, store it, import it. All that stuff takes time out of your busy, busy day. So definitely worth the value if you want to consider. Um, well, there's some free options, but even if you're going to consider buying some, you know, think about it. So I'm going to leave you there. Hopefully you found something useful in this video. As always, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see you next time. So thanks.